start this season up. All right, good morning. It is um, Friday, September 11th. We are in Maryland for the first day of Maryland's archery season. September 11th, so we probably just keep that in perspective what happened 19 years ago. Anyway, we are um, at this property. It's public land. Um, Lane met me and we um, took the drive. Um, we're excited because it's the first day. It's kind of warm out. It's really humid, um, but we have some north winds. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a bedding area that, that up in this one point, and it looks like there's a drainage on the tote, but we see a drainage that drops down to a food source. Um, there's like a little bit of a grass field and some yards, people's yards, and then there's a few oaks in there. We're hoping deer are in that area feeding this morning, and they're gonna funnel up that valley and then wrap into this bedding area. Uh, north wind should put those deer kind of favoring the south side of that bedding area for, for today. So we're gonna set up on the south side of this bedding area on some trails that kind of go into it. And we're hoping to catch some deer going in there this morning. Um, I know generally speaking, early season hunts aren't the most productive, especially for like a big buck. But at the same time, my freezer's empty and I'm not opposed to shooting some doe. It is possible that we'll see a good buck. I did see a couple good buck in the area scouting this week. About half of them were in velvet, half of them weren't. So we'll see, um, you know, a velvet buck shows up. That's always a pretty cool opportunity at that. So we're gonna hang out here for maybe five, 10 more minutes, soak up this air conditioning <laughs> because we gotta climb a hill and um, we got some gear to carry, obviously. We have probably about an hour and 15 minutes before shooting late anyway. So. Yeah, it's the start of Maryland season. We're excited. This is going to be pulling a bow case out of the truck. The mobile hunters are probably rolling over in their graves today because I have a climber on my back, but I mean, it's not so tr super trendy, but it's gonna work for where we're going. I have a climber, I use a Tenzig uh, fanny pack, and then I have my uh, safety harness and my shirt all tied in back there. Probably weighs, I don't know, maybe maybe 20 pounds total. It's not really heavy at all. So I'm gonna climb this freaking mountain now on this humid day. <laughs> all right, you ready? Yep. We're working our way up this ridge, and um, one of the things we talked about is, Lane and I talked about on the way in here today, is that if, depending on what the oaks are doing in this area, it may influence our morning setup. So as we work our way up this trail, we're not going to really leave the trail, but we're going to be kind of paying attention for deer sign in general, but also if there's any oaks, actually acorns, laying on the ground. If we see a bunch, we might shift our setup a little bit to, to get closer to them a little bit, because we assume that deer are going to feed through those a little bit on the way back to bed this morning. Um, so we don't want to miss out on that action there. So we'll keep our eyes open for acorns this morning walking in. These are leaves from a white oak tree. So we know, like, we know that there's a white oak right in this area. There's a leaf, but I'm not seeing the acorn, so we at least know this white oak's not dropping. So hopefully um, 
something comes through here in a little while. It's we probably got about a half hour or so before uh, first light. Yep. <laughs> We're like getting ready to pack up. It's it's like almost nine o'clock, and this one hiking trail. We heard people go by walking a dog. In fact, the dog was barking, and we're just like, oh man, we should wrap it up. You know, go take a little break and then come back in this evening. And uh, out of nowhere, this doe just came in straight to us. I mean, to the base of the tree, and uh, she came in, hit our ground stand. I think she came right to the tree. So she looked up, and I was like, oh, that punk. But uh, when she turned to go away, she actually kind of half ran, but she slowed to a, like a walk and stopped at, I don't know, 12 yards or so. We're pretty high up here, and I, there's a limb kind of, was kind of blocking part of her vitals, but I was able to tuck it up in there, I think, pretty well. It sounded good. We're going to just hang tight here for a little bit, and, and uh, hopefully we're on the board already. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you just talk about it. I never really so cool to freaking drill the ear here. Dude, that was perfect, too. Exactly. I knew you told me she was going to come in. Yeah. Because you said earlier, you're like, yeah, I didn't really expect Deer Mule to be over here. Yeah, because uh, the wind, our our wind was blowing a little more out of the west than they were forecasting to. It was supposed to be out of the north. There wasn't even any west aspect to it. Well, it was more northwest. 
and it kind of blocked. I don't know if you can see it behind us, but there's a really good trail that comes out right here. And that's where we were hoping to jay hook in this way. Well, the wind's blowing almost right up through there. So we were talking earlier that we were gonna see deer come to this bedding area or come around it. It was probably gonna be from this side. And sure enough, she came right in like straight to us. I mean, perfect. It was a good mature doe for sure. Did you just bang one? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was nice. Freaking freezer nanny. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> See some of the modifications I did on my climber over the years. Like this comes with two straps. I just put one in the middle, and then I put a little bag on here. I put my bow rope, my pull rope, and the, the fork for this uh, bow holder in there. And I mean, it served me well. Like I said, it's a lot of mobile guys anymore talking about you know, different sticks and steps and everything else they can use and all that. And that's, I, I am too, but a climber definitely has a place in the woods, and I use mine pretty regularly, especially here in Maryland. We'll go here and check the arrow. It's right over here. Let's look at the trees. Lane, Lane showed you already the trees. It's just two poplar trees, two tulip poplar. One's pretty much telephone pole. That's why I used the climber. And then Lane was in the one with the limbs. We were up there probably about 18, 20, maybe 22 feet at the most. And uh, we're standing right where the deer was at when she got a good look at us. And then she made the mistake of stopping when she wanted to run away. And I made the best of it, I think. That's the lighter. <laughs> yeah. Look at that, that's green. Yeah. So that's, you know, usually cause for concern. Um, doesn't stink though. That's probably just throat, dude. Yeah, I think it maybe came out of her throat. She was browsing when she came in. Uh, the rod looks in pretty good shape. It hit this uh, log right here when it went through. I'm gonna pack that in there. Now when she boogied out of here, she kind of went down here, hair, and then hooked that way. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if we can find for blood. We got some rain last night, so any fresh tracks, we didn't see any other deer today. Any fresh tracks are probably hers, so that'll help too. Yeah. Uh, good track. I said it's kind of crappy because there's some oh, water blood. right there, yeah. <laughs> It's just hard. Oh, we got spraying blood right here too, dude. Is she? Yeah, we So we were tracking this deer. We had really, <clears throat> excuse me, a really good sign. I mean, pretty heavy blood. And uh, came around this thick stuff. There she was laying head up. I was able to put a second arrow into her. Um, she was bedded right here where we're sitting right now. I shot from 15, 10, 15 yards away. And it's pretty good, you know, before I could see her. Follow this sign here a little bit. Just make sure we she's dead. She didn't. We didn't hear any loud bounding after the shot or anything. I think she probably just ran a little bit and fell over. She probably would have expired in not too much longer. But I don't like suffer, deer suffering. It's the worst. It's just freaking terrible. Like you know, you you want to get it done right. <clears throat> and that's how hunting archery goes. It's like you're up here. <clears throat> excuse me. You're you're down here because you're not seeing deer. And then you see deer and you make it happen up here. And then things go south and you're back down there. So you do the best you can to make it work. And you just try to be as ethical as possible. So that's what we did. It's not blood here, it's still blood. There she is, the opening. Wait, hold on, wait. She's right there, there she is. Sorry, Hell yeah, right yeah. there, man. Yes. Hold on, wait. Yeah, she's done, she's done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is freaking so stressful. Yeah. It's the ultimate roller coaster, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. 
buddy. Yes, she is. Yeah, she's a nice doe. That's the shot I had when she was bedded. The second shot, she was had her head back to me and I quartered it into there. She only went, what do you think, probably 20, 30 yards yeah. beyond that. After, after you shot her. Good size come. doe here in Maryland on public land. Um, like we were talked about earlier, we um, we got into this spot on the south side of a bedding area with winds expected to be uh, coming out of the, the north. It did kind of become more northwest, but she came um, from the, uh, the side we hoped and we got a maybe a 12, 15 yard shot at her. All right, we just flipped her over here. We flipped her over, we wanted to see where that first shot was. And she was quartering pretty hard. Hit her right here, you know, but it looks like I don't know if she wheeled around or what, but the air went in here and it came out right like out of here. But it got it went in behind the rib cage, so it must have came out right here. And uh, I'm sure it got one lung, but I was hoping to punch it through the other opposite side. That's weird. I've never seen that happen before. She then uh, went probably 80 to 100 yards, and we had good blood to that spot. I mean, it started off faint because we were actually. Um, there's no there's no leaves down there, so we're trying to trying to pick up blood just on dirt. We're finding on occasional sticks and small leaves here and there, but um, we followed the blood that hundred yards, and we looked up, and there she was laying with her head up. You could tell she wasn't feeling good, but we you know we could have backed out and just left her die, but I hate the idea of her laying there suffering. So then I put a second arrow in her. This uh this knife was uh, my grandma and grandfather gave me this knife when I turned 12, so um. I had the sheath when it fell apart, so I made this one out of a, a leather glove from work. Whatever. Uh, but, I mean, it's a buck knife, you know, and it's, it's kind of sentimental, you know, using it for, uh, I've been using it since I was 12. Well, I didn't take my first year, so I turned 15. So I've been using it since I was 15 to uh, process deer to gut deer. That was not the way I wanted to end today, necessarily, but we recovered the deer, and, um, <coughs> you know, now we got some meat for the freezer, which is awesome.